everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video i'm going to tell you how you can restrict access of your azure open ai service instance to just the selected networks so rather than everyone is using it or everyone is invoking this particular instance from anywhere over the internet we just want to restrict it so that we don't get unnecessary costs so let's quickly understand the use case first so let's say you have a web application which is nothing but your chatbot and this web app is already deployed on the Azure so I'm using class to do that next thing is we do have an Azure OpenAI instance deployed so let's make it over here so if I'm talking about the ideal case what happens is this is how the communication happens. So web app can access Azure OpenAI instance directly. So of course you may have assigned some roles, permissions, but this is how the ideal case is. Now, if you will look at this particular scenario, there are few problems associated with it, especially with terms of the security. Now, the very first thing here to understand is whenever we are building a web application, definitely there are a lot many services which we are plugging behind the scenes. It could be your REST APIs, it could be your databases, and we never want our backend services to be directly exposed to our clients. So in that case, we somehow have to hide this particular area or we somehow have to restrict this particular area. So in the same scenario, if we are talking about the same situation, we don't want our Azure OpenAI instance to get accessed directly from somewhere else. So whoever is the user of my web app can only access this particular instance and that too not directly. Web app, web app is the only way to access this particular instance. And the reason why I'm emphasizing on this is because today what happens is let's say your Azure Open key, uh, key, AI keys leaked. In that case, user can directly go ahead and make a call to this, irrespective of whether he's using web application or not. So this is the major reason why we don't want our service to be directly exposed to the web app uh, in the same way how user can access it. So how we can make this communication a little bit secure. So the one way to do is either we can go ahead and create some boundary over here or we can create some boundary over here and we'll say that whenever the request is coming from this boundary, then only invoke the particular service. So let me go ahead and create a, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and create some thing. So let's say this is my virtual network. So you can consider virtual network is a, as a kind of boundary so that whatever is inside that are completely virtual and are basically the restricted environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my web app into this virtual network and definitely web app should have like we need some address so that outside parties like Azure OpenAI can uh, we can access the Azure OpenAI from this particular network. So for that we do need to have something called subnet and why we need subnet over here is let's say this is the virtual network we have the red one and we have lot many services in this case it's just one service but let's say you have many other services which you are using so you can put all those services in single virtual network and can assign the individual subnets so if you want to access this you will be using the ip address which is against the subnet if you are having some other application then you can use the respective subnet so uh, coming back to this i'm going to create a virtual network and i will put this particular web app in this particular network will in this virtual network and it will have some subnet associated with it okay now what i'm going to do on the azure open ai side is rather than web app directly accessing it what i will say that azure open ai instance use or serve the request only if it is coming from this particular virtual network and definitely we can restrict it to subnet as well so serve this request only if it is coming from this particular side so now tomorrow if you are using your api key then also it will not work so that is the first level of security which we are going to implement today so let's quickly have a look at this setup and i'm going to use the same web application which we have 
seen before in my managed identity demo. So what I'm going to do here is this is my templates folder in which I have published all my HTMLs and I'm rendering the basic form which is having just a text box and a button to send a request. And coming on to my Azure OpenAI code, these are the few lines of code. I'm not doing any exception handling or anything. It's just for the demo purpose. So I'm making a call uh, using this GPT-5 Turbo Instruct. And so this is the very simple setup. Next thing is we can go to Azure portal. Here I have already deployed a service. I can quickly show you. So this is the web app which I have already deployed. Let me quickly start it. Okay, so this is the web app and now we want to push this web app in some virtual network. So what we need to do is we need to create a virtual network. So go to virtual networks, click on create. And here you need to select the resource group uh, you want. And it is always recommended that you put the virtual network and the associated subnets or I would say associated applications in the same region. So it would be easy to add and handle uh, the situation. So I'm going to take this one and let's give some name. And this is the region which you can select. I will go with West US. Uh, click on next. And these are the few options which I will be taking up in my upcoming video. So let's leave these as is right now. Then here comes the subnet, uh, subnet thing which I was talking about. So in our case, we just have one web application which is going to sit in this virtual network. So I can go ahead with the default subnet. But if you have multiple, then you can click on this add a subnet button and get your other applications or the subnets added. So let's go with the default one. And if you want to change the network and the host addresses or the number of IP addresses you are looking for, you can adjust this using this particular drop down. So let's go ahead and click on next. I don't want to give tags. So now it is running the validation and click on create and it will go ahead and create a virtual network for you. So I'm not going to click because I have already created one. So this is the subnet. Uh, this is a network, virtual network which I have created and you can see it is in the West US and this is the address space it is having. So nothing else I have configured is just a plain virtual network. So now what we need to do is we need to put our web application into this virtual network. So for that we need to go back to our web application. So this is the web application and here you can see it is in the same region which is West US. So go to networking. Now there are a few settings. So the first setting here is enabled uh, the inbound traffic. So we don't want to restrict the inbound traffic because this is a web app and I want it to be accessed from everywhere. So if you want to change the setting, just click on it and it will give you all these options that which all IP you want to restrict or grant permission to. So let's go back. I will go back to networking. But the thing which we are interested in is, is the outbound traffic. And here you can see there is a something called virtual network integration. So let's, let's click on this one. And here we need to add the virtual network. So I'm going to select the subscription, the VNet which I have just created in the West US. And this is the default which we have. So select the subnet and click on connect. It will go ahead and put this web application into this virtual into the virtual network we just created. So it's going to take few seconds. Let's wait for it. Okay, it's good to go. Let me quickly. Okay, so here you can see now our VNet is associated with this particular web application. So this is one setting. Second thing we need, which we need to do is uh, we need to make sure to inform Azure OpenAI instance that serve the request only if it is coming from this particular endpoint. So for that, you need to go to Azure OpenAI. So let's go back to this. So this is the instance which I have already created. The only thing which is remaining is to make that setting. So for that, what we can do is we can go to networking 
and here you can see this is the default setup because earlier I was allowing access to every uh, all the networks so this time I'm going to select selected networks and private endpoints now forget about private endpoints I will be discussing it in my upcoming videos but let's focus on the first part which is selected networks now I want my Azure OpenAI instance to be accessed only from the selected networks so here you can see the virtual network so from here also you can create one but as we have already created I'm going to add the existing network so let's select this one and the subnet if you have multiple subnets you can select all of those and you can see that it got added over here and it is enabled as well so it means it is good to receive the request so what I can do is let's save it and try to access the application now so for accessing the application I can go to our view and click on the URL which is my web application URL and I will ask a simple question here what is Python don't go with the UI I just made it bare minimum so and this is the answer or the response which we received from the Azure OpenAI now the question is how will we make sure that this thing is set up very nicely and no one else can access this particular instance of Azure OpenAI so to do that experiment what you can do is you can go to your local machine here and this is the code which I have written earlier and this is how I was testing so now if I want to execute the same application again what I need to do is I will simply say flask.run and it will open up a server for me so let's give it few seconds okay so the developer and if it is throwing an error then it means that you are able to configure the network properly so let's go ahead and ask some question here and it should give us some internal server error because I haven't done the exception handling so this is a generic error which you will get and this is accepted now the question is everything is working over the network but let's say if I'm doing some code changes tomorrow then I want to execute my application from my desktop as well so which means that we need to grant access to this permission so here you can see the sync principle does not have access to api or the operation so it means that we need to grab the ip of our machine and then add it to that list under the selected network so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to add my ip address by clicking on this particular button over here so i will quickly grab my ip address and paste it over here because I want to grant access to this IP as well so now if I will go ahead and save this it should allow access uh, to Azure OpenAI instance from my local machine it's still going on you can see on the top let's give it a few seconds and it should be done okay I think we can give it a try if it doesn't work then maybe we can wait for a few seconds for the changes to get reflected so here is my instance from local machine and I'm asking what is AI and it should not give me internal server error this time here you go so this is how we can make this particular setup work and we can keep our expenses low especially with respect to the Azure OpenAI yeah. so I hope you enjoyed watching this and do let me know in comments if you are facing any kind of issues thanks for watching